My motivation to make cities and mobility more inclusive, inclusive is to improve accessibility and opportunities for everyone, to create um, healthy environments that promote the physical, the mental and social health of the communities in general, and also to promote active and independent travel uh, for children, because this has many, many um, health benefits. Um, and the thing here is that um, Many of our children, uh, I work mainly with children in, in children in Cali, Colombia, and they walk to school. About almost 80% of them walk to school, but there are also so many risks that they face. So our, our challenge is how we keep these children walking, you know, after they're able to uh, maybe have the possibility to buy a motorcycle. How can we keep them walking and cycling? And for this, we need to address all the risks that they face every day that go from road safety to personal safety to even sexual harassment and anything from the environment that limits uh, their mobility. Yes, uh, for gender sensitive planning, I think uh, travel patterns are key. Um, we did a study recently in Bogota and we found that, that the travel patterns for women and men are completely different. Uh, for example, in low income areas, we found that uh, women spend 16% more time uh, commuting and they also use more public transit. Um, also, uh, women walk more within the neighborhoods. So uh, this is really important because, for example, we, we noticed that many of the road safety measures that we're putting into place to improve road safety in, in the city in general are for uh, arterial roads. But we found that uh, if you want to improve the road safety for women, you would have to start by um, implementing road safety measures within the neighborhoods, you know, because uh, we walk more and we use public transport more. So we are pedestrians, basically. Um, and the, the, the deaths of men were, or, or, or the, the, the fatalities of men were mainly in the arterial roads, while the, the fatalities for women were in, within the neighborhoods. So in the planning sense, for ex in, in this example, we would have to implement uh, low speed zones to improve the women's road safety and also other measures for uh, arterial roads, but we would have to focus on different measures for, for women. Um, I also think we have to look into safety in general, um, personal security, and also uh, sexual harassment. We work with many children and um, adolescents, and we, uh, you know, ask them about their mobility, how they move around in the neighborhood, you know, what are the risks that they perceive. And um, it's interesting that they say that uh, for them, crossing the street is dangerous. About nine of uh, seven, nine of, of ten um, girls say that crossing the street is, is dangerous. But also, the sexual harassment is something that limits our access to the city and our mobility. And it's interesting to see that um, w when we did the study, about 30% of the children of the girls that are, were nine to 12 they said uh, they experienced sexual harassment in their daily journeys, 30 percent, 9 to 12. But this number goes up to 71 percent as they turn, you know, as they go from 13 to 16 years old. So sexual harassment is really an issue that limits our mobility. And we should focus on that in, in, in our planning. If we want to promote walking and cycling, we need to address this type of issues that really limit the mobility of women. Um, I think I agree with the statement uh, because of what I what I've uh, mentioned before. Um, when we did a study on travel patterns in um, in Bogota, we found that women move differently than men. Uh, women use more public trans transit in general, and low income women also spend 16% more time than men in uh, commuting. Um, also, uh, as as I told you before, uh, we move a lot on foot uh, within our neighborhoods. So, for example, if you want to improve the mobility for women that walk or bike, you would have to build infrastructure within the neighborhoods, not only in the arterial roads. Um, another thing that we found that was, you know, also about planning is that 
Um, for example, um, we, we were checking the whole map of, of Bogota and we were looking at the trips that were made by bicycle by women. And we found that the places that had no infrastructure had zero trips on bicycle for women. So it's very important to uh, build infrastructure so they can feel safe and they can move around safely. If we want to improve the mobility, um, the, the number of women on bicycles. Um, we also found actually that the number of people on bicycles or the percentage of people that move on bicycle has been increasing. But when you look at this number, you see that for women, this has been decreasing. So overall, we have an increase of women, of, of people moving around on bicycle. But, you know, for women, it went from 25% in 2011 to actually 21% 21 per, um, 21 in 2015. So this shows that, you know, our policies need to be also, uh, they need to have a gender perspective because yes, it's working. We have more people moving around on active transport on bicycles, but many of like this share has decreased actually for women. So can, how can we, our policies, our planning, our infrastructure be focused to also increase the number of women moving around on bicycles or on foot?